Now, even though I would consider my long-term dividend focused portfolio pretty diversified, as you can see, I hold different single stocks as well as various different ETFs that offer different things and have different objectives. There's a good handful of more income focused, higher yielding ETFs within my portfolio that I've been stacking shares of now for several years. Now I've been focusing on just a handful of these different cover call style, higher yielding, more income focused ETFs over the past several years to try to get my portfolio to the point to where it earns north of $7,700 in total monthly dividends, which I'm honestly pretty close to that point as of right now. But in this video, I want to go through some of my favorite higher yielding, dividend focused, income focused ETFs that I've spent collectively well over $100,000 on in the past several years. Now, just because I've invested a lot into these various different names, don't necessarily mean that they're going to be the right fit for your portfolio, because again, all these different ETFs have similar yet very different objectives. But if you wanna see which ETFs I've spent well over $100,000 on over the past several years and hold in my long-term portfolio, make sure to stick around, drop a like down below, and let's get right into the first one. Real quick for those that haven't already, make sure to go to the first link in my description and grab my new dividend investing ebook where I share exactly how I went from $0 invested to now earning over $6,000 on a monthly basis and over $1 million invested in the market. Along with the ebook, you're also going to receive my custom dividend tracker where you can track your dividend progress on an ongoing basis and reach your dividend investing goals. So make sure to grab yourself a copy of my dividend investing ebook and the new dividend tracker today. It's the first link in my description. So the first more income focused investment that I've been buying like crazy during 2024 and stacked up around 700 shares of now across my portfolio, which equates to north of $35,000 in this single position is SPYI or the NEOS S&P 500 high income ETF. Now I've talked about this ETF a lot on the channel. You guys know this is one of my favorites and this is because this ETF utilizes the S&P 500, but along with that implements a data-driven call option strategy, which not only allows you to get some more exposure to the S&P 500, which who doesn't want that, but also along with this cover call strategy, there's a lot of income generation to be had along the way. Now, SPYI offers a monthly payout distribution, and currently the distribution rate is around 12.11%. The expense ratio is definitely up there at 0.68%, but all the good in this ETF, at least so far, has outweighed all the bad, and then some. Now, to make it clear, what are the reasons on why I purchased so much SPYI for me personally? It's simply because I want more exposure to different stable or somewhat stable income generating ETFs like this one that once again track a very stable index, but along with that utilizes a cover call strategy and pays a ton of distributions or a ton of dividends in a very tax efficient manner, which at least as of so far for the most part, SPYI is in all that. Now the distributions up until this point for this ETF have been anywhere from around 48 cents upwards to 55 cents on a single month. And for an ETF that costs around 51, $52 per share, that is quite a big distribution. Now, along with that, like I said, I'm looking for stable income producers to add into my long-term portfolio, which SPYI definitely is. It's up around 6.7% in the max time frame. And honestly, even if this one traded sideways over the long term and paid me a juicy 11, 12, 13% per year, I would be more than happy with that. Now, like I also mentioned, I currently have, I think, around 700 shares of this one, and I will continue to add some more shares here and there, although for the majority of this position, I would say it's pretty much built out. Another more income-focused ETF that I've spent a ton of money on over the past several years is JEPI or the JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF. JEPI, across all my portfolios as of right now, I think I'm sitting at just north of 1,200 shares of JEPI, which is north of a $60,000 investment or something around there in case my math is wrong. Now, the reason I own so much JEPI is honestly more or less the same on why I started buying so much SPYI. I wanted something that's going to give me low volatility, but pay me a decent portion of income along the way with, of course, some potential upside appreciation. Now, JEPI over the long term hasn't really grown all that much in price. I'm going to show you here in a second. But over the past several years of me holding onto JEPI, if we were to look at all the dividends I've been paid over the last several years, I think I'd probably average out around an 8 to maybe 9 to maybe 10% yield. So in the context of that, JEPI for me personally has done exactly its job for what I was looking for originally when I bought into this one years back. Now JEPI does something very similar to that of SPYI. It basically utilizes the S&P 500, then implements written out of the money S&P 500 index call options to generate that distributable monthly income. Now one thing about JEPI that I don't necessarily love is that this ETF is going to pay you a different amount more or less every single month, or at least it's how it's been over the past 12 months. Some months you're going to receive something like 30 cents. Some months if volatility is very high, you could receive as much as 42 cents. And although it sort of all averages out to a nice solid yield, over time as you gather more and more shares, it's sort of nice to know exactly how much you're going to be expecting. Now, as far as over the time frame that I've held on a JEPI, like I mentioned, it's done exactly what I would want it to. It's traded more or less sideways up to the right a little bit. It's up 19.18% in the max time frame. I'm up a little bit on it as far as my shares go, but I've been paid income every single month since I started to hold on to those shares. 
Another ETF that I own quite a bit of, JEPQ, JEPI's brother or sister. This one's exactly the same, more or less, only attracts a NASDAQ inside the S&P 500. Now, JEPQ is another one I have a sizable position in my portfolio. I think I have around 500 or 600 shares, which equates to roughly $30,000, $40,000 just there. Now, this ETF has done a little bit better than that compared to JEPI over multiple timeframes, and this is likely due to the fact that the NASDAQ has a little bit more volatility and has outperformed the S&P over certain timeframes. But more or less, the reason I bought into JEPQ a long time ago was the same reasons as other ones. I wanted more exposure to something that's decently low volatility and also something that's going to pay me a significant amount of income ongoingly every single month. Now, JEPQ has definitely done exactly that, with anywhere from around a 10% yield over the last 12 months and certain months paying as much as 55 cents, which is massive. And honestly, if you ask me when it comes to super high quality, higher yielding options out there as far as income focused ETFs, if we're talking about the highest quality across the board, JEPQ personally always comes to mind if you ask me. Now, even though there's tons of other dividend more income focused ETFs that I do hold across my portfolio, this is going to be the last one we're going to cover in today's video and definitely subscribe if you guys like things like this. But a new sizable position that I started as of recently, around a $5,000 position, was into SPYT, the Defiance S&P 500 Income Target ETF. Now, this ETF is relatively new, but has yielded around 20% since inception and has traded more or less sideways, which I'm very excited about. Now, this ETF has a totally different strategy compared to JEPQ, compared to JEPB, and of course, compared to SPYI. Now, SPYT is an actively managed ETF dedicated to generating current income. The strategy revolves around holding shares of ETFs to track the S&P, performance, and engaging in selling of daily credit call spreads on the index. Now, because of this, this ETF has the potential to earn a lot more income than that, even compared to something like JEPI, JEPQ, or SPYI. Now, this is still a smaller position compared to the other few because I do think it has a little bit more risk potential because of the strategy involved. But at least so far, SPYT, the Defiance S&P 500 Target Income ETF, has, like I said, traded sideways up into the right a little bit. This is since around March and paid massive, massive distributions to investors in the form of $0.30, cents, $0.32, cents, something within that range over the past several months. Now, this is one that I'll continue to add to my portfolio, especially on red days, because I personally do see the vision when it comes to SPYT, and I think this ETF is going to do amazing things in the future. So those are just a few of many higher yielding, more income focused ETFs that I currently hold across my portfolio that if we were to stack them all together are easily over $100,000 worth of purchasing. But now lastly, most importantly, I want to hear from you guys down below out of JEPI, JEPQ, SPYI, and SPYT. If you, for whatever reason, could only hold on to one of them, which one would it be and why? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to please drop a like and subscribe for more future content like this. Thanks as always for stopping by and if you are interested in investing, make sure to check out these recent videos I posted right here.